I'm reading to you from the authorized version of the scriptures, authorized by God, commonly known as the King James Version. For who this video is actually intended, um, I don't expect you to have a copy of the authorized version. But those of you of the Church of the Living God, brothers and sisters, and even if you are not, and you have a copy of the authorized version, please pick it up and read along with me in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. we got a lot of stuff we're going to talk, to, uh, talk about today. Um, please follow me along in the scriptures we will look at. Uh, follow me along word for word, verse by verse. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Follow me along, because sometimes my mouth will go quicker than my brain. Okay? Open the scriptures. Open the scriptures and follow me along. Okay? Don't just sit there passively. <clears throat> and like I said, if you do not have the scriptures and just click on this for whatever, Lord, be with this mouth. Be with this mouth. In Jesus' name, amen. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 14 on to verse 20. I have not uh, found a thumbnail for this, but um, you'll see by the title, and uh, thank you to those of you who have recommended about the hashtag thing to try to override this wicked shadow ban, but I digress. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 14 on to verse 20. When thou art come unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shalt possess it, and shalt dwell therein, and shalt say, I will set a king over me, like as all the nations that are, are about me. And then, of course, you see this happen in 1 Samuel chapter 8, I believe it is. Uh, where the people go to Samuel like, we will have a king, just like all the other nations around us. And the Lord Jesus Christ, God, our Father, is, you know, at that time, he, he is the king of the Jews. He is king of kings, Lord of lords. But the children of Israel rejected the Lord being their king, and they wanted a, a mankind representative instead of the Lord. You can read about that in 1 Samuel. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. Yes. The powers that be are ordained of God. They really are. They really are. And uh, are they ordained of God for either one of two reasons? One, to bring glory unto his name. Or two, which we are seeing now throughout the world, and especially in this Jesuit, Masonic, communistic, soon-to-be country called America. Um, the powers that be are ordained for judgment. For you, my American countrymen, why in the wide world of sports entertainment do you think we have such a deplorable government today? It's judgment against America. That's why. You have the rotten demicommies trying successfully instilling the tenets of communism. But then again, the Republicans want to bring in the elitist form of government to um, exalt the rich. It's a no-win situation for America. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. One from among thy brethren shalt thou set, o set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. And of course, a lot of people here in America, uh, with the whole nonsense about, Hail Obama! <laughs> okay? It's a joke. But he shall not multiply horses to himself, 
nor cause the people to return to Egypt. To the end he should not to the end that he should multiply horses, for as much as the Lord has said unto you, ye shall henceforth return no more that way. And of course Solomon blew all of that. Okay? But return unto Egypt. Remember, this is written under the dispensation of the law, which was faith and works. Eternal security was not there, okay, like it is today. And the returning unto Egypt, the Lord called the children of Israel out of Egypt, okay? If you're saved, born again, converted, you came unto the Lord according to his conditions, and he saved you by grace through faith, he has called you out of Egypt, the world, and is calling you unto himself, okay? And the ruler of the nation whatsoever multiply horses to himself, you know, or, more importantly for the case here, nor cause the people to return to Egypt. Go back to the things that they left behind. Seek not unto the heathens and that kind of stuff. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself, that his heart turn not away, neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. And of course, Solomon blew all of that. He had over a thousand women at his disposal. Okay, the, the real player, as if you will. And you read about Solomon, those women psh, turned away his heart from the Lord. Okay? And also, the Lord gave Solomon a lot of currency. Gold and silver and stuff like that but he also of his own devisings as well. Mm -hmm. And it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priests, the Levites. Ah, so the ruler is to have a point of reference. Okay? The ruler of said people is to have a point of reference, a book that, in, uh, that has instruction in it, truth, okay? And it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life, that he, that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, to keep all the words of this law and these statutes to do them. That his heart be not lifted up above his brethren. And that he turn not aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left. To the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom. He and his children in the midst of Israel. Now this is written for another dispensation specifically unto the Jewish people, yes. But the instruction in righteousness is profound. And especially in verse 20. These, and I'm using America because I'm an American. <laughs> I understand why you of other nations, even you scoundrel devils, I understand why other nations hate America. I really do. I really do. But verse 20, that his heart be not lifted up above his brethren. Every single solitary politician in America whether they're a Republican or a Demokami, okay? Their hearts are lifted up above, okay? And the Masonic document, the Constitution, which is a Masonic document, okay? Don't be fooled by some of these King James Bible believing Christians who themselves, I am quite sure, have masonic ties okay america america was never a nation of god there are those of the church of the living god erroneously erroneously today referred to as a christian remember catholics are christians um this nation was never a nation of God. There were those of God within this nation, and it is because of that that this nation has been able to do the things and the grace that has been there, yes. But in and of itself, you got to remember, 
the the ones that came over here were Puritans first, okay? Puritans, not Baptists. And when you look into the history of the original 13 colonies or states, you know that America, you ought to know, uh, you can deny it because you're a Freemason all you want, you stupid idiot. Um, America was doomed. This soon-to-be nation was doomed when you had one of the original 13, a state dedicated to persecuted Catholics, Maryland. I have yet to hear you respond to that. Okay? It was, it, America was doomed before she even began. Okay? And uh, this idea that America was found on Christian principles, huh? You see that? That's, uh, that's uh, like a copy thingy of the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, that kind of thing. Not the whole shebang, got a copy of it. Our founding fathers were Freemasons. Oh, you can go ahead and make all your arguments about, well, George Washington, he was a Baptist. Yes, he was, actually. you got to remember... Very much like the Jesuit order who controls Freemasonry. Um, perfect example, Benjamin Franklin, the epitome of a Freemason. He bowed at every altar. He went to all kinds of churches. Methodists, Baptists, Quakers, Presbyterians. He went everywhere. He was a whore. Okay? So yeah, I'm sure, actually. Yes, you know, when you think about it, sure. George Washington, sure he was a Baptist, but he was first a Freemason, okay? The Constitution that a lot of people like to try, you know, defend and talk about, it's a Masonic document. It's a Masonic document. I challenge you to prove me wrong, okay? Because what is it to the Freemason but to build their kingdom here on earth? Okay? They're building their own little kingdom. That's why you got to watch out for some of these preachers who are building their own little petty kingdom, you know, who act as if they're a feudal lord or something like that. You got to watch out for these people. Okay? But here in the political sphere of America, the politicians, whether they're Republican or a Democrat, they lift themselves up above their brethren. And this idea of a nation of the people, by the people, and for the people, okay, this American experiment with the out of context, I believe, liberty of conscience, when you allow liberty of conscience for Satan and his church, what happens? You look at America. Evil is good and good is evil. Okay? Give me a break. Give me a break. Quit trying, quit making excuses for this country, okay? America is doomed. America has gone past the point of no return. What once was is not is now, and it never will be heretofore, okay? And instead of, and instead of trying to rescue America from a pit in which she cannot get out of, Speak on to those people who are engulfed, trapped within this thing, thinking that America can become great again. You're insane. You're insane. You are absolutely insane. Hmm. Today, we are going to be addressing communism. Communism. Some of you youngsters out there, you think you're being cute. I'm a communist. You even know what a communist is? Communism, in a nutshell, is government controlling virtually everything. That That's simplified. Okay? Um, and today we got, there's going to be a lot of information for you. Um information given by other brethren, uh, which I will mention as we go along. But we got a lot of stuff we're going to be going over today. 
We are going to look into the Communist Manifesto, and we're going to look at the alleged Ten <laughs> Commandments, as it were, of the Communist Manifesto. Okay? You're going to hear some French terms. Now, hold on. Hold on one second. Okay, I had to check the pronunciation. You're going to hear terms when we're going through this. Bourgeoisie or bourgeoise, which is a French term. Bourgeoisie and proletariat or proletariat or proletariat. And communist. What is that in our jargon? Bourgeoisie or bourgeoise is a term for the middle class. Proletariat is a term for the lower class. Then ultimately, what is the ultimate state ruling class? Well, that would be the Jesuit order. Communism. Communism. Okay? We, we got a lot of information we're going to be going through. Um, got some of this stuff. Uh, there will be a multitude of information for you in the uh, description box. Um, a brother of ours, um, uh, Perfect Standard KJV, uh, check out his uh, information as exposing the whore, Mystery Babylon, and her army, the Jesuit Order. Check out his stuff, okay? He had something to do with this as well as other brethren. We are going to today give reference onto the secret terrorists by the by Bill Hughes, yes, who is a Seventh Day Adventist. We're going to look at things within the Sacrita Monita, the secret instruction of the Jesuits, and the audio book of that will be in the description box. And we're also going to be referencing this by Theodore Greisler. Uh, this says this is a complete history of the Jesuits. Uh, this is like a volume two of very small stuff. But, um, and we're also going to be going through the Communist Manifesto here in parts. But we got a lot of information to go over. And you got to remember, okay, as we're going through this, the Jesuit order, Roman Catholicism, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, is the ruling class of the world today. And it is such as judgment upon this world, okay? For example, you will hear some of these Christians, when they talk about the American government, they will always, they'll, they'll, not always, excuse me, some will go to, well, the Freemasons are the ones in control, or the Illuminati, and stuff like that. And the Illuminati it was a front for the Jesuit order. Okay, and you'll hear these people try to tell you that the Freemasons are in control of the Jesuit order. That is not the truth. It's opposite. The Jesuit order is more powerful, more richer, more influential than the Freemasons ever were. Okay, the upper echelon, the hierarchy of the Freemasons is controlled by the Jesuit order. And what happens is you get some of these Christians, I'm not a Christian by the way, who come out and will do good in exposing how, as here in America, through the Demokamis, are instilling and successfully instituting the tenets of common communism. We're going to look at that. But what they do is they focus on the Freemasons or the Illuminati falling into the trap of the Jesuits. See, what that is, is they're focusing on the Jesuits or on the Masons and Illuminati instead of rightly pointing their attention onto the head of the snake, which is the Jesuit order, Roman Catholicism. Okay? Roman Catholicism, the Jesuit order, is what is manipulating and controlling the Freemasons. The, the Illuminati was a front for the Jesuit order. Okay? All right? And you got to watch out for some of these Christians who do that. They will look at the distraction, the sleight of hand. Okay? They'll have you look at the Freemasons and the Illuminati, which are, yes, but they're controlled by who? The Jesuits. The sleight of hand. They, they have you go look at what's going on up here while the Jesuits who are in control of everything are working behind the scenes and whatnot. Okay? Likewise, another example, uh, Mein Kampf, 
which the Jesuits attributed to Hitler, who was at, but Mein Kampf was actually written by a Jesuit named Joseph Stanfel or whatever. Um, I might have his name wrong. A brother sent the information, which will be in the description box for you. Okay. Uh, um, Adolf Hitler did not write Mein Kampf. A Jesuit wrote Mein Kampf, and it was attributed to Hitler. Okay. So, Mein Kampf, which was uh, written by Stampfel, was attributed to Hitler to take away attention from the Jesuit order. And you have to remember, and the uh, video of Jesuit Secrets Revealed will be in the uh, description box for you, okay? Here's a quote from Adolf Hitler himself. Quote, I have learnt most of all that the Jesuit order, so far, there has been nothing more imposing on earth than the hierarchical organization of the ch Catholic Church. A good part of that organization I have transported direct to my own party. The Catholic Church must be held up as an example. I will tell you a secret. I am founding an order in Himmler. I see our Ignatius de Loyola. And see, people say that Hitler was an atheist. No, there's no such thing as an atheist. An atheist believes in a God themselves. And they say, well, the communists are brazenly atheists. They even make reference to Catholicism. Yes, they do. But see, that's a distraction. Okay, and you go over the um, the um, blood oath, the uh, extreme oath of the Jesuit. Okay, the Jesuits who will infiltrate, whether it's spiritual or temporal coadjutors, they are there and they speak against their own order. Okay, to put on the facade that they're speaking, it's it's a joke. Okay, the communists do not believe in the God of the scriptures, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. But you want to know the God that the communists, the Jesuits, the Nazis believe in? I'll tell you. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 Verses 3 on to verse 6. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the little g God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. And who is the little g God of this world? That would be Satan, Lucifer, that old serpent, the devil, the dragon, whatever you want to call him, okay? He is the little g-god of this world. All this has been given unto him, and whomsoever he will, he give it to. If they fall down and worship him, all will be theirs. They, they, it's, that's in Luke chapter 4. Go find it, okay? The little g-god of this world is Satan. And when you are an atheist, saying you don't believe in a God, well, what is your standard of truth? That would be yourself. You decide what is good and evil. You decide whatever, right? That's Satanism. That's the lie of the Garden of Eden. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And man in and of himself is incapable of correctly judging what is good and what is evil. You need God, the authorized version of the scriptures, to do that. Why do you think, dear friend, there are so many Bibles out there. Okay? Distinction. This is the scriptures. Don't read a Bible. Read the scriptures. The authorized version. Okay? Because you've got to remember also, in Ephesians chapter 6, just one verse, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The Jesuit order. 
Mystery Babylon the Great, Satan. As judgment against this world, Satan is being allowed to run things. And see, once we, the Church of the Living God, the body of Christ, get redeemed, caught up, a lot of you know of it erroneously as the pre-tribulation rapture. It's the redemption of the purchased possession. The catching away. Okay? And like so many of the devils themselves will point out, rapture ain't in the Bible. You're right. It's not in the Bible, and it surely is not in the scriptures. But the redemption of the purchased possession is. And, you know, if you're one who brings up that point that uh, rapture isn't in the scripture or in the Bible, why do you keep using it? Freemason. Freemason. Okay. Now, and also, too, I want to share with you a quote from uh, Fedor Dostoevsky, or whatever his name is. The Jesuits are simply the Roman army of the earthly sovereign of the world in the future. With the pontus, pontiff of Rome for emperor. That's their ideal. It's simple lust of power, of filthy, filthy earthly gain, of domination, something like a universal serfdom, with them as masters. That's all they stand for. They don't even believe in God, perhaps. The devils also believe in tremble. But the God that the Jesuits serve and believe in is Satan, the little G-God of this world. And you got to remember, as Napoleon Bonaparte himself said, that the aim of the Jesuit order is to establish that spirit of Antichrist, okay, that kingdom that that man of sin, the son of perdition, will be head of during the time of Jacob's trouble. Ultimately, that Satan will be the head of. Okay? That is their goal. That is their aim. That is the end. Okay? All right? And as the Jesuits will have you to pay attention to the Freemasons and the Illuminati to draw attention away from them, as they will have you believe that Adolf Hitler wrote Mein Kampf when actually it was stampful to take away attention from them, just like with communism. They tell you that Karl Marx and Frederick Engels, Jews, were the creators of communism. No. Mystery Babylon was. There is a book, which I wish I had, um, to read it, you know. But there will be a PDF for you in the description box written by Sir Thomas More, an enemy of the Church of the Living God. And I got this wrong before, but uh, Sir Thomas More was around the 1400s before the Jesuit order and whatnot. Um, I, I forget which one he opposed, whether it was, um, oh, the guy who did the Hexapla, Tyndale, whoever it was. But Sir Thomas More, uh, the ever-Roman Catholic, wrote a book called Utopia. Utopia. And in that book is the framework, the groundwork, which would become communism. And of course, the Jesuit order took that of Utopia within the Paraguay, in Paraguay, the Reducciones, and kind of molded it into what would become communism. And just like they did, they do with the Freemasons, and as they did with Hitler, trying to take uh, away the, the, the attention from them, the Jesuit order, which are basically the creators of communism, even though it was based off of Sir Thomas More's work, they attribute communism to the Jews to get the attention off of them and also to make you people hate the Jewish people. Okay? 
The Jesuit order. The Jesuit order are the creators, as it were, of communism. Okay? And two, think of the religion of Catholicism in and of itself. It, was cre it got its creation in Babylon. It was refined in Egypt. It is perfected today in Rome. Okay? You have to understand these things. You can, you can pee, mine and, pee, moan, and whine all you want. That is the truth of the matter. That is the truth of the matter. Okay? And the Jesuits are the creators of communism. And the goal of this video is to show you, and we're going to be in the scriptures, that the Jesuit order is, in fact, the creator of communism. Community. Communism. Okay? So, if you've never read this, this is appallingly evil. But then again, people say, well, the Jews created communism. And Marx and Engels, they were Jews. Okay? These were traitors to their people, to their kindred. Absolutely. Absolutely. But just like the Babylonian religion known as Catholicism began in Babylon, refined in Egypt, perfected in Rome. Okay? Communism began with Sir Thomas More, refined in Paraguay with the Reducciones, perfected by the Jesuits, attributed unto the Jews. You see how this works? You see how this works? Now, Catholicism. <laughs> Communism, more or less, is basically big government controlling every, everything. And socialism, we're not going to focus on socialism, because the ultimate end of socialism is communism. Okay? Communism. And here in America, when you look at these satanic demicommies, and hey, if the Republic can't, the Jesuit order controls both sides. It's the Hegelian principle or a Hegelian dialect being worked before you, before your very eyes. What is that? What is the Hegelian dialect? Okay, Hegel was a German philosopher. Control the argument, the counter-argument to produce the end result. That is the Hegelian dialect, okay? The Civil War. The Jesuits controlled both sides the Confederacy, the Union, to produce the outcome, which was what? The United States of America. Okay? But, communism is big state, big whatever controlled government. And you look in the history of these nations that have been communist. <laughs> well, China, they're doing, you look at them, yeah. Yeah, they're eventually going to be destroyed. Look at North Korea. Need I say anything more? Okay? Look at the Soviet Union. Well, they're not communists anymore, openly. Openly. Okay? Openly. All right? But then again... Look at this government by the people, for the people, of the people, or whatever. And look what's going on today, dear friend. Evil is good and good is evil. It's going to be a crime to speak against these transgender nitwits. It's going to be a crime for you to speak against sodomy. Evil is good and good is evil. Okay? And all the while, you got these evil devils like the Robertsons. Why are you hating on the Robertsons? I'll get to that someday. But you got these people trying to attribute this Christianity onto this stuff. And Christianity is Catholic. Catholic. It's not the faith that was once delivered onto the saints. And we as saints need to be vigilant about distinguish, distinguishing between that. But 
communism in effect is big government controlling everything. And you listen to the demokamis, that's basically what they're, you know, they're doing. And you got these people thinking that, well, the Republicans will come in and they'll change. <laughs> It'll be made worse. It'll be made worse. Just in a different flavor. Okay? But let's look at some of this called communism. Now, one of the, we're going to look at these Ten Commandments of Communism. Um, if, like I said, if you can go ahead and get a copy of this, go ahead and get it. See, read what the enemy wants to do. And then you compare the Communist Manifesto and you look at what is being instituted here in America. And it's horrifying. But see, instead of falling for the trap that the Jesuits will have you to, to get the blame off of them, you go right for the head of the snake. It's the Jesuit order. The Jesuits are responsible for this. Not the Freemasons, not the Jews, but the Jesuits. You understand? Now, one of the big tenets of communism is what? The abolition of private property. Okay? We're going to look at the Ten Commandments, as it were. And here, the, like I said, bourgeoisie, bourgeois, and uh, proletariat. Proletariat, lower class, bourgeoisie, or bourgeois, middle class. The state, which... The Communist Manifesto does not clearly define, but the upper class is the communist class, i.e. the state, which is what? To be the Jesuit order, Rome. Because you got to remember, the papal insignia with the two keys that has the IHS, Isis horse set, the symbol of the Jesuits upon it, with the crown and the two keys that symbolize spiritual and temporal. That means that the Pope, Arturo Sosa, never mind Francis, he, he's a Jesuit, he's subservient onto Arturo Sosa. Yes, Arturo Sosa is the boss of Francis, okay? The Pope, the, the Catholics believe that the Pope has the power to control all the governments and to keep you out of heaven and hell. And the Jesuit order goes about to seek to gain the world for Rome, that the whole world will be controlled by the volition of a single man. That man of sin, the son of perdition, ultimately Satan. Okay? But they, in order to do that, get away from private property, which the scriptures give allotment for. Okay? But see, if you take away private property and make it public, who controls the public property? Well, that would be the state, i.e. the Jesuit order, Rome. Okay? Quote, in bourgeois society, now that means when you hear that phrase, that's a reference onto middle class in the jargon of communism. In bourgeois society, therefore, the past dominates the present. The middle class. The past dominates the present. If we don't learn from the past, we're doomed to repeat it, right? If you want to know what's going to happen in the future, you look into the past, right? But what does the communist say? In communist society, the present dominates the past. Now you think about that. Roll that around in your brain case. Who dictates what you learn about the past? Those who have destroyed those of the past. Hmm? Your history books. Why do you not hear of anything when it, about the Civil War of a religious aspect of it? Hmm? Why do you not hear any tie-ins in history about how Hitler was uh, financed by the Federal Reserve Bank here in America? 
Why do you not hear any aspect of the fact that Hitler himself, you heard the quote, was a Catholic? Hmm? Why? Because the history books have been rewritten by the Jesuit order. Hence, the present dominates the past. And you, you think you're being cute, saying you're a communist? You don't know what communism is. Okay? The present dominates the past. Read 1984 by George Orwell. Okay? Another uh, servant of the Vatican. Okay? <laughs> the past has been rewritten by who? The Jesuit order. Okay? The Jesuit order. That quote in bourgeois middle class society, therefore, the past dominates the present. If you want to learn the uh, know the future, you look into the past. If you don't learn from the past, you're doomed to repeat the past in the future, right? Okay? All scripture is given by inspiration of God, okay? You read what happened in the past, like it says in Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Okay? Go there. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Okay? For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Okay? Looking into the past so that we may learn from those things so that the future may be better. Okay? But communism, Jesuitism... You read Fox's Book of Martyrs, okay? What they did to the Church of the Living God, okay? How Rome has rewritten the past, okay? In communist, communist society, Jesuit society, the Dark Ages, the present dominates the past. Okay? That's from the that's from the Communist Manifesto. Okay? Alright? That's Jesuit. Alright? And also, and also, in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Okay? Communism tells you the past dominates, the present dominates the past. That ought to get the hair on the back of your neck standing up. Okay? In bourgeois society, now remember, you hear that word bourgeois, bourgeoisie, proletariat. Okay, proletariat, lower class, bourgeois, bourgeoisie, middle class. Well, what's the upper crust? Crust, the communist, Rome. In bourgeois society, capital is independent and has individuality. Yes. While the living person is dependent and has no individuality. And the abolition of this state of things is called by the bourgeois abolition of individuality and freedom. Quote, and rightly so. There you go. The abolition of bourgeois individuality, bourgeois independence, and bourgeois freedom is undoubtedly aimed at. Here, the highlighted. Read it for yourself. That's what the communist aims at. Hello, dear friend. That's what the Jesuit aims at. That's what Rome aims at. Okay? <laughs> okay? All right. Quote, in a word, you, the middle class, 
those who have brains in their heads, will approach us, the communist slash the Jesuit, with intending to do away with your property. And what do they say? Quotes. Pro precisely so. That is just what we intend. And you look here in America today. You look at how Bill Gates is buying up farms. You look at how uh, people have to go to the government today to get their seeds. Government-related seeds. Government-regulated farming with their genetically modified uh, organisms and stuff like that. Okay? Go to the government for help instead of the Lord. Okay? The communist Jesuit principles are covertly right now in effect in America. You know the only reason why you have any freedom here in America? It's because of the church of the living God that resides in in this Jesuit nation of America. That's why. And once we're gone, once we get redeemed, Satan, through that man of sin, son of perdition, is going to have free reign to do as he pleases. You don't have to be left behind. Don't believe the lies of these Christians, okay, who do not represent the faith that was once delivered on to the saints. Don't believe a majority of these King James Bible-believing Christians who are Freemasons, who are Jesuit, temporal, or spiritual coadjutors. Read the scriptures yourself. Okay? From the moment when labor can no longer be converted into capital, money, or rent into a social power capable of being monopolized, i.e., from the moment when individual property can no longer be transformed into bourgeois property, middle class, into capital, from that moment, you say, individuality vanishes. You must, therefore, confess that by individual, quote, you mean no other person than the bourgeois, than the middle-class owner of property. Quote, this person must indeed be swept out of the way and made impossible. And see, some will think with communism, well, to exalt the lower class to the rank of uh, the upper class, okay? At first, it's like, well, that sounds good, right? But think about it. They never define who the state is. Who is defining who is who? Well, that'd be the Jesuits. It's a smoke screen, dear friend. You think you're cute, kid, don't you? You think you're cute. Well, I'm a communist. You're an idiot. In the true definition of the word idiota, you are an idiot. And willfully ignorant, which I call stupidity. You're an idiot and you're stupid. Okay? And also... As we also clearly see, all right, according to our God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, this structure of what is called family is what? God, husband, wife, child. Okay? That's the order unto our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is the head of the church, the body, not those buildings. The man is the head of the wife. You feminazi, transgender, whatever, deal with it. Okay? You read Genesis chapter 2 in the authorized version. Okay? 
The woman was created for the man, not the man for the woman. You feminazis, you got to deal with that. Okay, and you don't. But, what? look at here in America. What is a woman? Trans women are women. No, they're not. Okay? <laughs> There's that one Hollywood movie called Kindergarten Cop that had Arnold Schwarzenegger or whatever, you know, the governor. And there's a quote in that movie, and please forgive me, I, I have to say this. Uh, the thing of gender is very simple, okay? And I beg your pardon. Boys have a penis and girls have a vagina. Sorry for being so blunt. But that's, there's only two genders. But yea hath God said, okay, well, what is a family? Scripture tells us it begins with God husband, wife, and then child. But what does Satan, through the feminist movement, which is doomed to fail, what does Satan, the Jesuits, through communism do? Quotes. Abol abolition, abolition, abolition of, to abolish, abolition of the family. Even the most radical flare-up at this infamous proposal of the communists. Yes. To the communists, the state is the family. And you look at this Jesuit-created communistic public school thing. Okay? <laughs> but you will say, quote, but you will say, we, the communists, Destroy the most hollowed of relations when we when we replace home education by social. Yes, and we're going to look at that. <laughs> and your education is not that also social and determined by the social conditions under which you educate by the intervention of society, direct or indirect, by means of schools, etc., that's why you don't have your children in schools. You teach that at home, teach them at home with the authorized version as your main textbook. Okay? The communists have not invented the intervention of society in education. They do but seek to alter the character of that intervention and to rescue education from the influence of the ruling class. And to put it into the hands of another ruling class, the Jesuit order, which have we have already seen, the present dominates the past. And you want to be a communist? You're you're a stupid idiot. Okay. The bourgeois call trap about the family and education, about the hollowed correlation of parent and child becomes all the more disgusting the more by the action of modern industry all family ties among the proletarians lower class are torn asunder and see this is written in a way to make you who are considered lower class by them it's like well this is for us no it isn't no it isn't you are to be still. The goal of communism is to establish state as supreme. And what is state? They never define that. State that is being referred to is Rome, Catholicism, the Jesuit order, people. Okay? <clears throat> it's, it's, it's insane. It's insane. It's insane. Okay? And their children transformed into simple articles of commerce and instruments of labor. And today people um, live vicariously through their children by going to their baseball games, by trying to have their children to attain to the things that they never did, and they make little idols out of their children. Quote, But you communists would introduce community of women Screams the whole bourgeoisie in chorus. What does that mean? Elevating woman to a status above man. 
or making man uh, women equal with man. Now see, in salvation, in, in salvation, if you come to the Lord on his terms, you don't boot the door out of the way and climb up some other way, you are a thief and a robber. When you come to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, you call upon him, and he saves you by his grace through faith. Okay? When he saves you, Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 on the verse 29. For ye are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, ye, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Salvifically, there is no distinction. There is no distinction in salvation today. Okay? Culturally, there is distinction. A man is a man and a woman is a woman. Okay? But the communist, Satan, wants to remove that distinction. There's this female bodybuilder who looks like a brick house, okay? Who could probably beat the snot out of me and even other men. Uh, that It's disgusting. She's disgusting. Hideous. Okay? But, okay... And that's what the communist seeks to do. Blur these distinctions. When scripture says it's God, man, woman, child, but Nazi feminism, feminism in itself says what? God, woman, child, pet, man. Communism here. The communists have no need to introduce community of women. It has existed almost from time immemorial. When Eve was tempted, she took the fruit and gave it to her husband. Okay? Adam should have been like, Slack, what are you doing? Okay? Eve was first deceived because Satan went to the woman first. How do you destroy the nucleus of the family? Go after the woman. You, okay, hold on. You can go. Yes, Satan can go after the man. But in Scripture, Genesis chapter 3, where did Satan go? He went to Eve. And hence, when you have the woman elevated, okay, elevated to headship, that's what they mean. That's what this means. Okay? That's what this means. All right? <clears throat> and also, too, the communists are further approached with desiring to abolish countries and nationality. Yes. Because they're all, because the Jesuits, Catholicism, uh, want you all, you're all citizens of Rome. Okay? All right? Yes. The Jesuit, the Catholic, is first loyal to Rome and then partially to whatever nation they live in. If uh, Sosa through Francis says something, then the Catholic is obligated because they are a citizen first of Rome to do what the Pope says, contrary to this nation in which they live. Okay? Hence the original 13, they were sovereign states. But the United States of America. See? Distinction. God is a God of distinction. Satan wants to blur distinction. And there's nothing wrong with distinction. Okay? All right? All right. Now, all right. Let's get, now I'm skipping some, let's get to the Ten Commandments, as it were, of the Communist Manifesto, okay, i.e. Jesuitism. 
Number one. The first of the Ten Commandments, as it were, of communism. Abolu abolition of property and land and application of all rents of land to public purposes. And who is in control of those public purposes? The people know the state. In your authorized version of the scriptures, Jeremiah chapter 25, Jeremiah chapter 25. Jeremiah chapter 25, verses 1 on to verse 11. The word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, that was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. The which Jeremiah the prophet spake unto all the people of Judah and to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, from the thirteenth year of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, even unto this day, that is the three and twentieth year, the word of the Lord hath come unto me, and I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking. But ye have not hearkened. And the Lord hath sent unto you all his servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them. But ye have not hearkened, nor inclined your ear to hear. No, you people don't want to hear the truth. You want to hear fables. You want to hear smooth things. That's why you're falling for Christianity. And go not after other gods. Oh, wait, excuse me, I skipped one. Verse 5. They said, Turn ye again now everyone from his evil way and from the evil of your doings and dwell in the land that the Lord hath given unto you and to your fathers forever and ever. And go not after little other little g gods to serve them. Go not in the way of the heathen. Neither learn how they worship their gods or whatever. Okay? <clears throat> and go not after other gods to serve them and to worship them. And provoke me not to anger with the work of your hands. And I will do you no hurt. Okay? Now, doctrinally, this is specifically unto the Jews in another dispensation. Look at America. Look at America. Need else? What else do I need to say? Okay? Yet ye have not hearkened unto me, saith the Lord, that ye might provoke me to anger with the works of your hands to your own hurt. Hmm. And see, even the Jesuits... Uh, through the book written by Samuel Morse, even say, our own constitution, our Masonic constitution, works against us and allows Satan and his church Catholicism to thrive. And there are those of you King James Bible-believing Christians that would fight for the Roman Catholic right to worship Satan! Freemason. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, because he have not heard my words, behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, saith the Lord, and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will bring them against this land, and against the inhabitants thereof, and against all these nations round about, and will utterly destroy them, and make them an astonishment, and a an hissing, and perpetual desolations. Moreover, I will take from them the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the sound of the millstone and the light of the candle. And this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment, and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon seventy years. Now, the Lord gave unto the Jewish people the promised land, okay, Israel, the nation and stuff like that. Okay, this is land allotted to them, private property. Okay, the Lord is for that. All right, and why did God, you know, cast out these other nations? Because the other nations were sinful. Okay, you can read about that in the Torah, in the book of Leviticus, and in Deuteronomy and whatnot. Okay, but this abolition of private property, 
Reading now from the Sacrita Monita, the secret instruction of the Jesuits. The audio book for this will be in the description box. Also, our beloved brother Alexander Hartley uh, has a uh, rendition of the Sacrita Monita himself. Okay? From the Sacrita Monita, chapter 16, concerning shewing publicly a contempt for riches. From the Sacrita Monita, the secret instruction of the Jesuits. Quote, Lest the secular should attribute to us too much affection for riches, it will be useful sometimes to refuse gifts of small value which may be offered for services rendered by the society. Although it is advisable to accept even the smallest gifts from those who are altogether attached to us, lest we should be accused of avarice if we admit only the more, more considerable. Okay? Meaning they don't want the pennies in reality, they don't. They want the big sums. But in order to put on the facade, the suspension of disbelief, they take all things. See. Two, burial in our churches, <laughs> the state church, Rome, should be denied to obscure persons, although they may have been greatly attached to the society, lest we may seem to hunt after riches by the multitude of the dead. And by this means it should become known what we receive from the dead. And a lot of the riches, and you read about this in the Secreta Monita, you can listen to the audio book, okay? Uh, they, they go for the widows, and on their deathbed, the widows bequeath a lot of their stuff onto the Jesuit order, to Rome, and stuff like that, okay? Number three. Now listen to this. Quote, it will be necessary to act more resolutely and sternly with widows and other persons who have given most of their property to the society. And that's what the Jesuit order gain, seeks after, to gain all the nations, all the private property, and have it ruled by the state, i.e. the Pope. The Jesuit order, so so. Inevitably, that man of sin, the son of perdition. Inevitably, Satan. The Jesuits seek to gain all the nations that they may be ruled by the volition of a single man. Okay? For example, the Mormons are prime holders of real estate in America. The Mormons, founded by Joseph Smith, a 33rd degree Freemason. The Freemasons controlled by the Jesuits. Okay? The Roman Catholic Church is in the real estate business and they seek to gain all the real estate. And opening it up for the public, so they say. But who is the state? Rome. Okay? Other things being equal than with others, lest we seem on account of temporal, earthly, benefits, to favor them more with than others. Indeed, the same should be observed with respect to such as are in the society. But after they have made a complete surrender of their property in favor of the society, in favor of the state for the public, in favor of the society, Rome. And if it be necessary, they may be dismissed from the society, but with the utmost discretion that they may leave at least a part of those things which they have given to the society or may bequeath it by will. What does this mean? That the Jesuit order communism, say, well, we want to gather all this for the public good. No. The Jesuits, through uh, communism, want to gain all lands so it will be under the control of the Pope, inevitably that man of sin, the son of perdition, Satan. 
communism is veiled Jesuitism, dear friend. Nothing more. And you, oh, I'm a communist. You're an idiot. I'm a democommie. You're an idiot. I'm a Republican. You're an idiot. They're all in control. They're all controlled by Rome. The Masons, the communists, those are fronts to take away their uh, attention from Rome. Get your head out from betwixt your buttocks. Okay? Number two commandment of the communist. A heavy progressive note that word progressive progressive um, science teaches that uh, thermodynamics and stuff like that everything breaks down with time. What does evolution what does the communist teach? Progressive things get better and they and, and of course you read the communist manifesto they make a reference on to being anti-god they are yes they are communists are against the god of the scriptures but they are actually serving the god of this world satan there is no such thing as a atheist the atheist serves themselves and you read Isaiah chapter 14, I will be like the Most High. You're an atheist. You are serving your father, the devil. You believe in a God, yourself. Hence, you are a Satanist. Okay? Well, Hitler was an atheist. No, Hitler was a Catholic. Okay? But you don't hear about that. Why? Why don't you hear about that kind of stuff in your history books? Huh? Why don't you hear about that? Because, quote, in communist Jesuit society, the present dominates the past. But a heavy progressive or gradual, in, or excuse me, a heavy progressive or graduated income tax. More taxes, more taxes, more taxes, okay? And if you are in a position uh, where you are being paid in a secular position and not receiving gifts, okay? But if you're in a position where, you know, pay your taxes, absolutely, okay? You don't have to pay taxes on gifts that you are given, okay? You don't have to become 501c3 for that either, okay? That is something that is talked about in the Masonic Constitution, okay? But, but, okay, this thing about a progressive, progressive, or graduated income tax. 1 Kings chapter 20. 1 Kings chapter 20. We want verses 1 on to verse 8. 1 Kings chapter 20, verses 1 on to verse 8. And Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, gathered all his hosts together, and there were thirty and two kings with him, and horses and chariots. And he went up and besieged Samaria, and warred, warred against it. And he sent messengers to Ahab, king of Israel, into the city. Ahab, one of the war, Ahab, whose wife was Jezebel. Yeah, Ahab, who was Nonetheless, one of the worst kings in Israel's history, but yet was the king of Israel at the time. Okay? And he sent messengers to Ahab, king of Israel, into the city, and said unto him, Thus saith Manhadad, Listen to this, Thy silver and thy gold is mine, thy wives also and thy children, even the goodliest are mine. And... What, does, what is one of the things of the communism? The state takes the place of father and mother. Is that not what's happening today in America? Okay? Through the democommies? Yes. But people, you're not going to get any better if the republicans are put there by the Jesuit order. Because they all serve the Vatican. 
okay? Putting a Republican person that you think through your uh, insignificant, meaningless votes that don't count, you think that putting a Republican in there is going to change things? It isn't. Okay? You need to wake up. You need to wake up. But it takes the state to raise the child, right? That, that's, that's Jesuitism. Okay? But Ben Haddad said on to Ahab, Hey, your wives and your children are mine. Your gold and everything, it's mine. It all belongs to the state, right? Yeah. And the king of Israel answered and said, My lord, O king, according to thy saying, I am thine and all that I have. He submitted. Check this out. That wasn't enough. It's never enough from the state, the Vatican. They want, every, they want more. Progressive, see. And the messengers came again and said, Thus speaketh ben Hadad, saying, Although I have sent unto thee, saying, Thou shalt deliver me thy silver and thy gold and thy wives and thy children. Yet, a progressive and graduated income tax Yet I will send my servants unto thee tomorrow about this time. The um, SS, the IRS, and your taxes do go to the Vatican, by the way. Okay? I don't have the literature to prove that to you. I wish I did. Okay? But yet I will send my servants unto thee tomorrow about this time, and they shall search thine house and the houses of thy servants, and it shall be that whatsoever is pleasant in thine eyes, they shall put it in their hand and take it away. Meaning, they'll take your clothes off your back and they'll also take the fillings out of your teeth as well. They'll take everything. Because it's for the state. It's for the common good. The common good? That's Jesuit? Okay? Then the king of Israel called all the elders of the land and said, and this is the end, to incite revolution. Okay? To the point where it will get so bad. And that's what the Jesuit order, through all their maxims of communism and whatever political thing you want to call it, the end is they want to instill revolt. Okay? Then the king of Israel called all the elders of the land and said, Mark, I pray you, and see how this man seeketh mischief. For he sent unto me for my wives, and for my children, and for my silver, and for my gold. And I denied him not. But see, there's only so much that they can take from you. Okay. And hence, the two keys of the Vatican that you see in the papal insignia. The two keys, spiritual and temporal. Okay? Rome, Mystery Babylon, believes they have the power to keep you out of heaven and hell. And they believe also that they have the power to control your very lives, even how you would wipe betwixt your buttocks. And Ahab, a wicked king, the Lord even gave him respite, or respite, victory. Because, after all, even though King, and King Ahab was a wicked king, controlled by his manipulating wife, Jezebel, he was still the king of the, the people of Israel. And all the elders uh, and all the people said unto him, Hearken not unto him, nor consent. There's going to come a time when it's not enough. It's going to come a time... When, for example, here in America, that they're going to try to take your guns away from you. Look at what happened in Nazi Germany. They took away the people's arms to defend themselves. Here in Illinois, okay, all right, they have this thing about assault rifles. Now, you know, I have handguns, but you know what? I'm not a bad shot. I'm going to hit what I'm aiming for, okay? All right, I don't need an AK-47. 
I don't need an M16. I don't need an Uzi. Okay? Granted, handguns are a shorter distance, but I can tell you this, I'm going to hit what I'm aiming at. And brethren, when it comes to the thing of defending your wife, your children, don't wound them. Because you can, you can hear about these stories of people where they've wounded assailants coming into their houses and the person who broke in sued the person who shot them and the person who broke in won. Aim for the head. Aim for the head. Okay? But see, a progressive... A progressive or graduated income tax taking more. They take your wives, your gold, your sons, and everything. But yet, they'll want to come in, search your houses, and whatever is pleasant in your eyes, they're going to take away just because they can. That's how it's going to get. Whether you have a demokami, uh, as the phrase is, a libtard demokami, or a conservative Republican, it doesn't matter. That is the future of this nation. 1984, okay? There's only so much. There's only so much. Okay? Third commandment of the Communist Manifesto. Confiscation. Oh, excuse me. Third, abolition of all rights of inheritance. All rights of inheritance. And Deuteronomy chapter 21, the scriptures is clearly, this is a no-brainer. This is a no-brainer. Okay, even uh, devils like John MacArthur can get this one right. Um. Deuteronomy 21, verses 15 on to verse 17. If a man have two wives, one beloved and another hated, and they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated, and if the firstborn son be hers that was hated, then it shall be, when he maketh his sons to inherit that which he hath, that he may not make the son of the beloved Firstborn before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn. But he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he hath, for he is the beginning of his strength. The right of the firstborn is his right of inheritance. Okay, the scriptures. You can even find this taught in the Bible. The scriptures clearly teach right of inheritance. But, 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 uh, Acts chapter 17, Acts chapter 17, oh no, excuse me, um, oh no, that's the, that's the next one, that's the next one, we're on three, um, Numbers, excuse me, I'm getting ahead of myself, Numbers chapter 27, Numbers chapter 27, Numbers chapter 27, verses 1 on to verse 11. Okay, check this out. Then came the daughters of Zelophehad, the son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, of the families of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. And these are the names of his daughters, Mahala, Noah, and Hogla, Milka, and Teresa. And they stood before Moses and before Eleazar the priest and before the princes and all the congregation by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Our father died in the wilderness, and he was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against the Lord in the company of Korah, but died in his own sin and had no sons. Why should the name of our father be done away from among his family? Because he hath no son. Give unto us, therefore, possession among the brethren of our father. Right of inheritance. They weren't male, the daughters of Zeholophon. But the right of inheritance. And Moses brought their cause before the Lord. 
And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, check this out, the daughter, daughters of Zeolophad speak right. Thou shalt surely give them a possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren. And thou shalt cause the inheritance of their fathers to pass on to them. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a man die and have no son, then ye shall cause his inheritance to pass unto his daughter. The right of inheritance. Okay? And if he have no daughter, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his brethren. Right of inheritance. And if he have no brethren, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his father's brethren. Right of inheritance. And if his father have no brethren, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his kinsmen that is next to him of his family within the kindred. And he shall possess it, and it shall be unto him, and it shall be unto the children of Israel a statute of judgment as the Lord commanded Moses. The scriptures is all for the Lord, is all for the right of inheritance. Satan is against it. Why? To gather all nations to be ruled by that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? This is Satanism. This is Jesuitism. Okay? Uh, this is the lesser of three evils. The three evils being Demokami, Republican, and Communism. Okay? All right? This is the greater of the evils. Okay, did I say lesser before? Excuse me, excuse me. This is the greater of the evils. Republicans and Democomies are the lesser than this evil, but they're all evil. They're all evil. Well, that's what they weren't in the, in the beginning. They are now, and they're not going to return to any kind of semblance that they imagined in the fantasy of the Federalist Papers and of the Constitution. It's never going to be that way now. Uh, now, Okay? It's never going to return to that heretofore. All right? Wake up. All right? But Scripture, God, is for right of inheritance. Number four, confiscation of the property of all immigrants and rebels. Someone outside of this nation of America, because of the way of the way it is here in America, supposedly, someone outside of our nation could come here, become an illegal citizen, and have their own private property and have that as an inheritance to give unto their family. Yes! Yes! Scripturally, Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. Okay? Acts chapter 17, verses 24 and verse 28. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Put that in your pipe there, Catholic. Christian. Okay? But no, you got to go to church. Where are you sending them to? To the Lord through the scriptures. Yeah, but yet, no, you're a Catholic. Okay? You say that God's in your building. You got to send them to a building. You can go to hell. And your little phallus house with you. <gasps> Where's your love? If I didn't love you, I wouldn't be telling you this. Somebody got to tell you. Okay? Neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything. And Christianity basically tells you that God needs you. Okay. When you got people telling that God needs you for anything, run away from them. Okay. <laughs> Neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything. Seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood, the blood of mankind, and hath made of one blood all nations of men, for to dwell on all the face of the earth, comma, and hath 
determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitations. The bounds of their habitations. You live there. 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 Distinction. Separation. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's what God intended. When you read Genesis 11, what do they do? What does man, what does Satan to flesh do? Bring everybody together so we can all be one. And when that happens, read Genesis 11, verses 1 on to verse 11, okay? Or 1 on to verse 9, excuse me. What happens when man gets together and can understand one another? They want to build a tower that reaches onto heaven so they make a name for themselves. Ye shall be as gods. But God is a God of distinction, of separation. You stay there. Enjoy your culture. You stay there. You stay there. Thrive in that. That's, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The same could be said with kindred. Okay? Yes. You're of Japheth. Stay within the boundary of Japheth. You're of Ham. Stay within the boundary of Ham. You're of Shem. Stay within the boundary of Shem. Okay? And remember, it is of Shem that the Hebraic people came. And the Hebraic people were given a specific instruction that they were to remain amongst themselves. Why was that? Because the Messiah would come from the line of the Hebrews. Okay? But stay within the boundaries of your habitation. There's nothing kindredist. The modern term is racist. There's nothing racist or kindredist in that. That's what God intended. But Satan wants to bring everybody together. Okay? Let's continue. That Verse 27, because we're reading on to verse 28. That they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him, and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain... Also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Now, a lot of heretics will come and try to twist that and say, everybody's going to be saved. No. The reason why you're alive is because the Lord has allowed you to live. The reason why you are breathing is because the Lord has allowed you to breathe. You look in a person's eyes. For example, you take a Polaroid uh, picture of someone, the eyes are red, there are light behind the eyes. When someone dies, that light that is in the eyes is go goes away. Okay? No one's home. Alright? That's what that means. That doesn't mean that everybody is saved whether or not they know it. Okay? But also, Deuteronomy chapter 37. Deuteronomy chapter 37. By the way, this ain't milk. We're here as long as this takes. All right? We're here as long as this takes. Deuteronomy chapter 37, verses 7. Or, excuse me. Excuse me. Did I say 37? Deuteronomy 27. One second. Deuteronomy um, 32. Excuse me. Excuse me. I wrote down uh, the wrong thing. Deuteronomy 32, verses 7 on to verse 9. Not Deuteronomy 37. Deuteronomy 32, 7 on to 9. Remember the days of old, consider the years of many, many generations. Ask thy father, and he will shew thee, thy elders, and they will tell thee. When the Most High divided the nations, their inheritance. When he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. Why was that? In verse 9, for the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. So God has set boundaries for the people. Stay within them. That's scriptural. We saw that in the New Testament. That's scriptural. But Satan, in his Jesuitism, oh, excuse me, in communism, 
just like in Genesis chapter 11, wants to bring everybody together to be ruled by the volition of a single man, Satan, that man of sin, the son of perdition. Today, Sosa and Rome. Okay? Scripture is against communism. Communism is Jesuitism. But see, the Jesuits want you to blame the Jews for it. Okay? Number five. Check this out. And hey, my American brethren. See, the original thing of the American states were sovereign states. You were a citizen of what state you were. Okay? But see, the United States of America, what happened? You have a centralized system of government. Jesuitism, Catholicism, centralized Rome. Now, during the kingdom of heaven, yes, there's going to be a centralized government in Jerusalem with the Lord Jesus Christ. But see, here's the thing. And if you haven't figured this out, there is no such thing as a perfect man-made government. In theory, in theory, there may on paper appear to be something perfect, but in practicality, in application, a government created of mankind is always flawed. Hence, the thousand-year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ, the kingdom of heaven, where God, ruling and reigning at Jerusalem, personally, is going to show us perfect government. Okay? Okay? But, check this out. The fifth commandment on to the Jesuit, excuse me, communist. Centralization of credit in the hands of the state by means of a national bank with state capital and an exclusive monopoly. A, let me read that again. Centralization of credit in the hands of the state by means of a national bank with state capital and an exclusive monopoly. I've done this in several videos. Here we have a Jesuit Federal Reserve note with the uh, sign of Ra right there and the Masonic symbol right there and the Eye of Horus and the pyramid, okay? All right? But our founding fathers weren't Freemasons. That's not a Freemason free document. Shut up. Shut up. Just shut up. But centralization, a state bank. The Federal Reserve, state bank. Ultimately, a one world, one state, and they never define what the state is. But Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13. Inevitably, inevitably, Revelation chapter 13, verses 11 on verse 18. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And dragon speaks smoothly and softly. We've talked about that before. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men, just like Elijah, and deceiveth them that dwell on earth by the means of those miracles, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to, to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. 
And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6. 666 World Wide Web WWW. Okay? Those idiot devils at Ch Shepherd's Chapel try to spiritualize this and try to say that it's not an actual microchip or a tattoo or whatever. It is exactly that. Okay? And you got guys nowadays saying, well, when the dollar collapses, go to gold and silver, which is scriptural currency. But when the dollar collapses, how are you going to take a chunk of your troy of silver or gold and go to Walmart and say, here, how are they going to do the exchange rate for that? And you read in the book of James that gold and silver will be cankered and the rust of them will testify against you. Gold and silver doesn't rust. What does that mean? During the time of Jacob's trouble, gold and silver will be not be used. Why? Because he has to establish a one world currency. And we, as mankind, are being trained today to prepare for a one-world currency. By how? Oh, centralization of credit in the hand of the state by means of a national bank with state capital and an exclusive monopoly. Hmm. And of course, you read in Revelation, Chapter 14, verses 9 on to verse 12. What happens if someone takes the mark of the beast? You got people like Kent Helvin, Jesuit. John MacArthur. Uh, what's, the, what's the big guy's name? Um, Breaker. Gene Kim. King Gene Bible-believing Christians. <laughs> okay? Students of Peter Ruckman. But you got these guys saying that you can cut off your hand, gouge it out. And what happens if you take the mark of the beast? Revelation 14, verses 9 on to verse 12. And the third angel followed, 14. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the, shame, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, not soul annihilationism like the Jehos, like the... Um, uh, that Mario guy, uh, like Shepherd's Chapel teaches... Okay, Bollinger writes, no, no, it's not soul annihilationism. You go to hell, the lake of fire, uh, eventually, um, you're going to burn forever and ever and eternity. Okay. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever received the mark of his name. Okay. And whosoever, any man. Okay. Here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and faith and the faith of Jesus and the faith of Jesus. Faith and works during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Any man, whosoever, eternal security is not there during the time of Jacob's trouble, except for the 144,000 Jews who are not the Jehos. Okay? Someone can be right with God during the time of Jacob's trouble. You take the mark of the beast in your right hand or in your forehead, you're going to hell no matter what. Even if you want to remove your hand or cut, out, cut it out of your head, it doesn't matter, you're going to go to hell. Okay? That's why you got to watch out for these devils of easy, easy believism. Uh, once saved, always saved is for this dispensation today. But during the time of Jacob's trouble, it is not there except for the 144,000 Jews. Okay? And see, the centralization of the central bank, a national bank, 
which was spoken against by the Masonic founding fathers. Yes? But see, it's the Hegelian principle. Argument, counter-argument to control the outcome, which is in favor of the Vatican. But this thing about the centralized bank from the secret terrorists by um, Phil Hughes on page 63, it's page 63, okay? And um, on this, there will be a lot of information in the description box about the Jesuit order. And again, like I said, uh, perfect standard KJV. He's got a lot of good stuff about the Jesuits exposing them devils. The Titanic. The RMS Titanic. On the, uh, the Jesuit order sank the Titanic. You're like, come on, dude. The Titanic hit an iceberg. Yes, it did. But see, if there were no iceberg, one way or another, that ship was going to go down. Why? Because the people who opposed the Jesuit Federal Reserve Bank were on there, and the Jesuit order had to remove those who stood in the way of their Federal Reserve Bank. Okay. Also, you look into history. Uh, there was a fire on board the Titanic that buckled some of the stuff in the paint. You can look that up and look for yourself. One way or another, the RMS Titanic was going to sink. It just played in favor of the Jesuit order that there was an ice field. And of course, that stupid movie where they, they played it off that the one guy was about getting a timeline or a limit or a deadline. It's like, hey, let's make it there faster so that Smith, a Jesuit coadjutor who went down with the Titanic, and you're like, why would these guys purposely do that? Because they're robots. They're machines. They have no mind of their own. They are told what to think. Ain't that right, you stupid bloke? You're, you're a pretty uh, intelligent guy, but see, these Jesuits and their coadjutors are told what to think. They have no mind of their own. They have no will of their own. They're what is called ac cadaver. They are the uh, sword in the hand of their provincial, provincial, the head of the Jesuit order. Okay? One way or another, that the Titanic was going to sink. Whether it were by an iceberg, whether one of the three-story story boilers exploded in a hole and she went down with the butt end first, which was the heavier end, okay? But no, it just so happened that there was an ice field there. And the Jesuits were like, there we go. There we go. One way or another, the Titanic was going to sink. From the Secret Terrorists, page 63, if you can get this still, I suggest you, even though this guy is a Seventh-day Adventist, and he, like the Seventh-day Adventists, they mess up the mark of the beast and stuff like that, okay? One of the great, quote, one of the greatest tragedies of the 20th century, the sinking of the Titanic, lies at the door of the Jesuit order. The unsinkable ship, the floating palace, was created to be the tomb of, for the wealthy who opposed the Federal Reserve System. And right here, where does it say? Right here of the American tender. Federal Reserve, no. This is Jesuit tender. What are you going to do? I'm in America. Okay. By April 1912, all opposition to the Federal Reserve was eliminated. Why? Because they were aboard the Titanic. In December of 1933, the Federal Reserve System came into being in the United States. Eight months later, the Jesuits had sufficient funding through the Federal Reserve Bank to begin World War I. Without no Federal Reserve, there's no World War I. No World War II. Who financed Hitler? The Federal Reserve. 
Look that up. There's no war in Korea. There's no war in Vietnam. There's no Gulf War. There's no war on terror. The Federal Reserve is the Pope's bank, people. And this uh, was written in the 18, late 18, 1800s. And what's interesting, it, the Communist Manifesto, Marx and Engels, also coincide with blood, blood clot and fart, West Cotton Hort, who Satan used to come out with their new Greek text to produce the revised standard version. It all coincides. But a central bank? A, cent a, central, bra a central bank? That's what the Jesuits' communism was talking about. All right? The sixth commandment of the communist Jesuits. Centralization of means of communication and transport in the hands of the state. The Hail Obama! Obama phones? Government regulated things online? The government is tracking you through your health phones on Google? Okay? All right? When is security governed through scrutiny? Well, communication and transport, government transportation, okay? And for scripture, Acts chapter 4. See, when you have centralization of the means of communication, what does that mean? Controlling speech. We're not going to focus on state um, funded um, uh, transportation. Like here in America, in Sh Illinois, the CHA or something like uh, Chicago, uh, CTA, Chicago Transit Authority, excuse me, but uh, government transportation. But the centralization of the means of communication, centralization of the means of communication means what? Controlling speech controlling the flow of information. Again, read 1984, okay? You control communication. You control how information... Look at, look at North Korea, okay? Look at communist China, okay? All right? Look at the history of the USSR, okay? All right? When you can control speech... You can control, you can subvert the people. Okay? Like I said, there's going to be a lot of information for you in the description box of this video. Okay? But when you can control communication, you can control speech. And if you can control speech, you can what? Control thought. Acts chapter 4, verses 13 on to verse 22. Now when they, the Pharisees, saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it, even though they want to. But that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them, that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. You look at what censorship happens here on YouTube. You look at the censorship on other uh, sites, okay? People talk about the actual Jesus Christ of the scriptures. See, there is another Jesus being promoted by Christianity. 
the actual Christ of the scriptures, the world doesn't want to hear that. Okay? There are certain words that if you say here on YouTube, your video will be taken down. Okay? All right? After years of being up, all right, they will also shadow ban you. They will harass your channel and videos. But they can't take away from those who have seen it, even though they can take away the visual con construct of the view, the number of views. But they can't take away from those who have seen and heard the truth, no matter what, even if they try. The censorship. Look at what happens here on YouTube with the algorithm, okay, and the shadow ban, and the deleting of channels, and the deleting of videos. What are they doing? Censoring speech. Controlling information, hence controlling thought, by a what? Centralization of the means of communication? And who's in control of that? Well, Google. Who controls Google? The Jesuit order! You look at the higher-ups. It's all Jesuit. But Peter... And John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. And see, Christians out there will tell you to obey the government no matter what. And they'll go to Romans 13 and they'll read a, the first couple of verses, but they won't continue reading. When your government tells you that you can't t speak what is according to the truth of God's word, but will have you to teach contrary what wins out. With Christianity in their 501c3 church buildings and their non-offensive Christianity, I'll tell you who won out, if you haven't figured it out already. And what is it better? Should, they, should we hearken on to God? men. And see, Christianity says, hearken on to men. For the punishment of evildoers, amen. But when God says abortion is murder, and that sodomy is wrong, and your government is going to penalize you, take down your channel, shadow ban you, arrest you for speaking against sodomites and transgenders, So when they had th further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. For the man was above 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing was shoot. Now, the seven... Oh, and also a quote from Avro Manhattan. Okay? A quote from Avro Manhattan. Avro Manhattan. If you don't know who he is, look him up. Avro Manhattan. Quote, The Jesuits are one of the largest stockholders in the American Steel Company. Republic and National. They are also among the most important owners of the four greatest aircraft manufacturing companies in the U.S. Boeing, Lockheed, Douglas, and Curtis Wright. Quote, Avro Manhattan, No political event or circumstance can be evaluated without the knowledge of the Vatican's part in it. And no significant world situation exists in which the Vatican does not play an important explicit or implicit role. What, is the, what does Mr. Avro Manhattan mean by that? Communism was not created by Jews. Okay? They'll say, well, they had all things common. And they'll point to the book of Acts. Uh, no, that's not, they were not communists. No. Communist is all about the Vatican ruling you. They were just sharing as a family. Big difference. This was created by the Jesuit order. Communism is Jesuitism, dear friend. Okay? 
Number seven, extension of factories and, ins and instruments of production owned by the state. Farmers got to get state license um, um, seeds. Here in Illinois, McHenry County, which have a notorious health department, Nazi health department, you have to be certain. You have to get a health license to flip a burger at McDonald's unless, unless you're Hispanic. Unless you cannot speak English. That sounds kindredist. That's a fact. That's a fact. That is a fact. That is a fact. I used to work in the food industry, hospitality industry. I've been in restaurants where immigration came and half of the employees left. Okay? Yes. Extension of factories and instruments of production owned by the state. State uh, regulated machinery, state regulated seeds, where they put in their genetically modified state sanctioned uh, meats, have to meet the FDA and stuff like that. You look into the history, who's behind all those organizations, who's running them, you'll see only Jesuits. Okay? All right? The bringing into cultivation of waste lands and the improvement of the soil generally in accordance with a common plan. And remember, Bill Gates buying up all this farmland. Corporations, Dow Chemical, Dow Chemical, which I believe they were the ones that created Agent Orange, responsible for genetically modified organisms. Okay? Come on, people. Come on. And Genesis chapter 47, Genesis chapter 47, Genesis chapter 47, okay? Genesis chapter 47. We want verses 20 on to verse 24. And Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh. For the Egyptians sold every man his field, because the famine prevailed over them, so the land became Pharaoh's. And you got to remember, the Pharaoh at this time was far better than the Pharaoh during the time of Moses. You got to remember that. Only the land of the priests brought, bought he not, for the priests had a portion assigned them of Pharaoh, and did eat their portion with Pharaoh, give, which Pharaoh gave them. Wherefore they sold not their lands. Then Joseph said unto the people, Behold, behold, I have bought you this day and your land for Pharaoh. Lo, here is seed for you, and ye shall sow the land. And it shall come to pass in the increase that ye shall give the fifth part unto Pharaoh, and four parts shall be your own. For seed of the field and for your food, and for them of your households, and for food for your little ones. So see you here, uh, see a concept of government re regulated food and growing and that kind of stuff. What happened eventually from this? At first it was okay because this was a good Pharaoh. But you read in Exodus chapter 1 verses 8 under verse 14, another Pharaoh came to power which did not know Joseph and looked to enslave, okay, in far worse a manner, the Jewish people. It eventually turned out to be negative, okay? Government controlled growing of food, government controlled whatever, and stuff like that. This was done for a good purpose, done by a Pharaoh that was all a good, quote unquote, fair, just ruler. But the Pharaoh that you read about in Exodus, not so much. Okay? Now the Eighth Commandment unto the Communists. Equal obligation of all to work. Establishment of individual armies 
especially of, for agriculture, equal obligation of all to work, including women, the women's suffrage movement. And you feminazis are going to love this. You go to 1 Timothy, and we already saw that the communist is all for the woman going to the workforce. And the communists, yes, are anti-God of the scriptures, not anti-God of this world. They are anti-capital G God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. They are not little g God of this world, Satan. But they're, they're all for the woman going to the factories and doing things that a man is supposed to do. And what does the scripture sayeth? Okay? <laughs> Plainly put truth, huh? A woman doing what a, a so-called woman doing what a man is supposed to be doing. There is no hope for you. Uh, 1 Timothy 5, verse 14. I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. Okay? You read Proverbs chapter 31. God never intended for the woman to take upon her the responsibilities of a man and go out there and, and earn a living in the factory or whatever. God's not against a woman having a source of income. Knitting, like my wife makes uh, crocheting, uh, making home-baked pies and selling them. Not against that, okay? But for the woman to take upon her the responsibility of the man, God's against that. But see... Communism is against that. And actually, Jesuitism is against that as well. But they will use it for the greater glory of God to destroy a nation and a people. And also, Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2, verses 1 and verse 5. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity and patience, the aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may, may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own, own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed, and here on YouTube, you see these women preachers, these women Pentecostal charismatics, contrary to scripture, doing what a man is supposed to do. Communism is all for it. Communism is all for it. Isaiah chapter 3. And because of that, because of that, uh, Isaiah chapter 3, verses 9 on verse 12. Isaiah chapter 3, verses 9 on verse 12. The shoe of their countenance doth witness against them. They declare their sin of Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Here in Woodstock, Illinois, they have a thing called Pride Fest, where they gloat, they boast of their iniquities against God. That's what's happening today in America. And in other nations. Okay. Say unto the righteous. That it shall be well with him. For they shall eat to the fruit of their doings. Woe unto the wicked. It shall be ill with him. For the reward of his hand shall be given him. As for my people. Children are their oppressors. And women rule over them. O my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy paths. And children are elevated to a status of idol. And women rule over you. Because of Jesuitism. And I personally believe that the next American president that the Jesuits are going to select 
is going to be a female. I may be wrong. I don't know. Is it going to be Trump? I don't know. Is it going to be DeSantis? I don't know. Is it going to be Carlson? I don't know. Is it going to be, are they going to select Smoking Joe? I doubt it. Are they going to select Kamala Harris? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. But whoever it is, it's going to be far worse. And if the Jesuits put in power a woman president, America will be finally bombed. Okay? And the ninth commandment. Now, I don't have any scripture for this one, but this one coincides with the communistic fourth commandment about the bounds of their habitation. Combining a combination of agriculture with manufacturing industries, synthetic food, synthetic whatever, okay? Gradual abolition of the distinction between town and country by a more equitable distribution of the population over the country. And again, this ties in with their fourth commandment where God has set the bound of their habitation. America, the beginnings, the original 13, were sovereign states. After the Civil War, the combined United States. Okay? Right? And finally, the tenth commandment of the Jesuits, excuse me, communism. Free education for all children in public schools. That's a communist Jesuit maxim. Abolition of child factory labor in its present form, but make it in a different way. Combination of education with industrial production, etc. Free education for all children in public schools. And you got to remember one of the maxims of communism in communist society. The present dominates the past. And as far as what God has to say, Proverbs 22. Um, your children should not be in a public school. Teach your children at home. Use the scriptures as your textbook. You can get other books uh, on English and language and stuff like that. Teach your children at home. Keep them out of the school system, which is controlled by the Jesuit order. Okay? Jesuits are infiltrators. They have infiltra infiltrated every facet of the culture of America and in your nation. Okay? The Jesuit can be the one pumping your gas. The Jesuit can be the one at the laundromat. The Jesuit can be the one flipping your burger at, Mac at the McDonald's. Okay? Watch out for these devils who say, well, the Jesuits don't mess with the little guy. No, they're about bringing everything together under the headship of Rome. But Proverbs 22, verse 6. Proverbs 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. The saying, it takes a, a village to train a child? No. It takes the father and mother to train the child through the scriptures. But what does the Jesuits say? It takes the state, the Vatican, to train a child. Doesn't matter if it's openly Jesuit or not doesn't matter what kind of school system a Christian is the worst okay it's infiltrated by Jesuits and controlled by the Vatican okay Deuteronomy chapter 4 Deuteronomy chapter 4 we're almost done we're almost done I hope you make it through this I really do I really do Deuteronomy 4 Deuteronomy chapter 4 verses 9 on to verse 19. 
Only take heed to thyself, and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons, especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they live, that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. And our Lord says, Come to me, all ye who labor and heavy and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon thee and learn of me. Okay? All right? And ye came near and stood under the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire unto the mist of heaven, with darkness, clouds, and thick darkness. And the Lord spake unto you out of the mist of the fire. Ye heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude, only ye heard a voice. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even ten commandments. And he wrote them upon two tables of stone. And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments that ye might do them in the land where ye go over to possess it. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the fire, lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female. The likeness of any beast that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged fowl that flieth in the air, the likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth, and lest thou lift thine eyes unto heaven, and lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun, seest the sun, the sun god, Ra, okay? And the moon and the stars, even all the host of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided on to all nations under the whole of heaven. Beware. And what has happened? Exactly that. People are worshiping other gods, not the God. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. But see this thing. The parents, father and mother, are to be the teachers of the children. Okay? For example, to become a surgeon, okay, yeah, you're going to need some kind of extracurricular. You're not going to want your father or mother. It's like, okay, he's got a, a, an aneurysm. Let's open him up with a steak. No, 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 no. But, you know, the things about who God is, the basics of life. You know, geology, history, mathematics, biology. You can find it here in Scripture. Okay? You can. The father and mother are supposed to be the ones teaching the children. Okay? Uh, all right? Now, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Verses 4 under verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 under verse 9. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. And when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the posts of thine house and on thy ga gates. And if you go into the house of a Hebrew, you'll see the little thing of scripture on their doors. In line with that, you'll see the, some of the Hebrews with these boxes on their heads that contain scripture. Okay? All right? But see... Father and mother are supposed to be the teachers of the children. Okay? And skip a little to verses 17 on to verse 25. Okay? Ye shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God, and his testimonies, and his statutes, which he hath commanded thee. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with thee. 
and that thou mayest go in and possess the good land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers, to cast out all thine enemies from before thee as the Lord has spoken. And when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, What mean the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord our God hath commanded you? Then thou shalt say unto thy son, We were Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. How does that apply for us today? Instruction and in righteousness. You're of the church and living God. God has called you out of Egypt, out of your past lost life, under the headship of Satan, Pharaoh, and is calling you on to um, himself. Okay? That's the instruction and in righteousness. Your son or your daughter, hey, the Lord saved me. This is what I was. This is what the Lord saved me from. This is how you get saved. This, let me tell you, son, daughter, who is Jesus Christ? Okay? It's not that hard to figure out. All right? Verse 22. And the Lord shewed signs and wonders great and sore upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh, and upon all his house, household before your eyes. And he brought us out from thence, that he might bring us in, to give us the land which he sware unto our fathers. See, go through the histories, teaching history. You can learn true history in scripture. And to learn true history of the world, stay out of school. Okay? You can to this day find accurate history outside of Jesuit controlled school. And all school, even the worst are the religious ones, the Christian schools. Okay, they're all controlled by the Jesuits. They're all communistic Jesuit. Okay? And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it, as it is at this day. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us. You might be saying, well, hey, that's, that's the Old Testament. Oh, you rightly divide the word of truth? What's that? <laughs> Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Remember, the target of the Jesuit are the youth. And their devil speaking coadjutors are so smooth. Ephesians 6, verses 1 on to verse 4. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Children, little rugrats. Okay? That it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Father and mother are to teach the children. And now from the Secreta Monita, the secret instruction of the Jesuits, page 30. Page 30, concerning the choice of young men to be admitted into the society and the manner of retaining them. Quote, the parents, the greatest prudence must be exercised in selecting young men of good understanding, well made, of noble race, oh, the great society or at least those who excel in one of these, that they may more easily be drawn to our institution. And especially if an especial affection must be shown to them so long as they are studying by the prefects of the schools and by the masters and out of school hours, they must be instructed how grateful it would be, be to God if they consecrate themselves and all that they have to him, especially to the society of his son. Let them be led, as opportunity offers, through the college, 
through the college and garden, and also sometimes even to our country seats, and let them associate with us in time of recreation that by degrees they may be made familiar taking care. However, that familiarity does not produce contempt. Do not allow them to be chastised nor placed in the same rank as other scholars. Let them be allured by gifts and various privileges. You're privileged if you go to so-and-so school, right? <laughs> Suitable to their age. And especially let them be encouraged by spiritual conversation. Let it be impressed upon them that it is by divine direction that they have been elected to the society out of so many who frequent the same college. It's a privilege to, for you to go to so-and-so school or to so-and-so preschool or pre-college or whatever. Okay? All right. On other occasions, but especially in exhortations, let them be terrified with threats of eternal damnation unless they submit to a divine calling. Uh, you can't do anything unless you got a high school diploma. You, you need a college education to do something. And the mindset, that, that esoteric, that upper echelon, that elitist, that communistic a uh, mindset, you know, and communism talks about raising the lower class to the upper. That's a lie. Because who defines and controls the lower class anyway? The Jesuits, the state, the upper, the elect. It's interesting that you attack the thing about election when you yourself think you are an elect. Interesting. If they seek firmly to enter the society... Let their admission be deferred so long as they can re as they remain constant. But if they appear to be wavering, let them be encouraged immediately and by every possible means. Let them be strictly admonished not to make known their vocation to any friend and not even to their parents before they are admitted. But if afterwards any temptation to go back should arise, then both he himself as well as the society will be as at first. And if these things should be overcome, there will always be an opportunity for encouraging them by reminding them of this afterwards. If it should occur during the time of novitiate or after they have taken simple vows, but because there is the greatest difficulty in alluring the sons of great men, of nobles or of senators, so long as they are with their parents, interesting, who train them to succeed to their employments, right? Oh, the inheritance or keeping the family business? Let them be persuaded that they should be sent into other provinces and remote universities in which our people teach infiltrating. Instructions be sent beforehand to the professors concerning their quality and condition that they may more easily and certainly win their affection toward the society. But when they are come to a more mature age, let them be prevailed on to undertake some spiritual exercises, which among Ger amongst Germans and Poles have often had good success. When they meet with troubles and afflictions, according to the quality and condition of each, let remonstrances and private exhortations be employed concerning the evil resulting from riches and the good resulting from not dispelling the call of religion under the penalty of the punishment of hell. That parents may more readily consent to the desire of their sons to enter the society. Let them be shown the excellence of the institution of the, of the society above other religious orders Oh, I want to go to Yale. I want to go to Harvard. I want to go to this school. I want to go to this one. Yeah. The holiness and teaching of our fathers, their blameless reputation with all, the honor and universal applause which were accorded to the society from the highest to the lowest, and let the number of princes and great men be recounted 
who to the great comfort of their souls lived in this society of Jesus and are dead and yet live. Let it be shown how grateful it is to God that the young should surrender themselves to him, especially to the society of his son. And how good it is for a man when he bears the yoke of God from his youth. But if any difficulty should arise in consequence of their tender age, let the easiness of our institution be explained, which beyond the observation of three vows contains nothing which can be very irksome. Chastity, obedience, and celibacy. And the fourth, of course, is the extreme oath of the Jesuits. And what is very remarkable, there is no rule which binds even under the pain of venial sin. Go to the Jesuits. Go to the school when mom, oh, excuse me, when father and mother are to be the teachers, as God says. And out of this book by Theodore Greisler, okay, quote, We alone whisper day to the men of high standing. We, the Jesuits, we the state know what's best for your children. We the state want to see your children go to their to a college and be indoctrinated by the, our tenants to take the education of your children out of your hands as God says it is to be and put it in the state, uh, hands of the Jesuits. Yes. We the Jesuits alone follow the right way as to the instruction of the youth. We alone can bring them into a properly submissive frame of mind. We alone can instill into them that veneration for religion and for the state. Highlighted stuff. Pause and read it. And for the state. Oh, as for the state? People, communism is a creation of the Jesuits. It was attributed unto the Jews, Marx and Engels, just like Mein Kampf was attributed unto Hitler, but was written by Stampful. Okay? All right? All right? Come on. And what is the state? The state run by the Vatican. The Vatican. Okay? That can thereby cause the popish priesthood and royal despotic power to prosper. Wherever, however, our colleges and seminaries do not flourish, wherever hitherto instruction has been entrusted to religious bodies other than ourselves, there has appeared the poison of heresy, and with this, the spirit of political disturbance, the essence of conspiracy and of rebellion itself, with such utterances did they endeavor to render tractable persons of distinction and those in power, and in most cases also, they were successful. Most of you people have been trained. If someone has a hundred thousand dollar piece of paper on their wall, you're gonna believe them, like uh, John MacArthur, Jesuit James White, okay, Robert Breaker, Gene Kim, okay. These guys. You go to a church building. You need the credentials. You need from man, man's to uh, to do this. Okay, you need the approval of man. And they'll go to Romans 13 and say, no, no, no. All right. Now, I am going to mispronounce this name, but this will be in the description box. Um, uh, the video for this. Quote, Priest Anton Arnold. Quote, <laughs> 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 
Do you wish to excite troubles, to provoke revolution, to produce the total ruin of your country? Call in the Jesuits and build magnificent colleges for these hot-headed religionists. Suffer though those audacious priests in their dictatorial and dogmatic tone to decide on the affairs of states. And Adam Weissop, Adam Weissop, who everyone talks about the founder of the Illuminati and some of these Christians, they point to the Masons and the Illuminati. But see, the Illuminati was created by the Jesuit order to take the attention away from the Jesuits to point to the Illuminati. Okay? And remember the Hegelian principle. Okay? The Jesuits will play both sides to control the outcome. But listen to this from a Jesuit himself. He's actually speaking truth. Adam Weissop. The degree of power, quote, the degree of power to which the representatives of the Society of Jesus has been able to attain in Bavaria was all but absolute. Members of the order were the confessors and preceptors of the electors. Hence, they had a direct influence upon the policies of government. The censorship of religion and f had fallen into their eager hands through YouTube and other things as well. Okay? To the extent that some of the parishes, even parish, some of the parishes even were compelled to recognize their authority and power, to exterminate all Protestant influence and to render the Catholic establishment complete. That's the end that justifies the means. They had taken possession of the instruments of public education. It was by Jesuits that the majority of the Bavarian colleges were founded, and by them they were controlled. By them also the secondary schools of the country were conducted." End quote. Dear friends, you kids think it's cute. Oh, the communists, you're an idiot. Communism is Jesuitism. Okay? A Republican or Democrat, they're controlled by the Jesuits. Okay? Yes, the Demokamis are more favorable toward open communism, but don't think for a moment that the Republicans aren't. Okay? These are facts. And if you want to deny that, that's your problem. And when you look at America today and compare them on to the Communist Manifesto, which is Jesuitism, And you think by putting in a Republican that you're going to make America great again? You think that America was a godly nation? This, this nation was doomed within the first th original 13 when you had Mary's land. So what do we do? We pray that the government be kept at bay, that the Church of the Living God may live a peaceable, quiet life in all godliness to be an example unto the lost, to live godly amongst the, these heathen peoples, to be ambassadors for Christ. Because as it is written, and then we will be done, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 on to 21, 
Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. We have the ministry of reconciliation, and we have the scriptures, the word of reconciliation, okay? Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. And we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Thank you for watching this. If you do, I hope you take this into consideration. You need to get saved. You need to get right with the Lord. Um, the Lord needs to save you. Okay? And you need to run away from all this stuff and search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. Be aware that this fantasy of what this thing called America was never was. And never will be. And our only hope, your only hope, is that the Lord save you by his grace through your faith. That's it. And how, what must you do to be saved? How are you saved today in this dispensation? Come, let us reason together, you and I. Thank you for watching this if you do. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.